Another day, another Japanese card we're going to be looking at that's going to be making a splash in our new format coming up in Stellar Miracle. My name is Rahul, and today we're going to be talking about Lapras EX, one of the new Terra basic Pokemon coming out in the Stellar Miracle set in September. Uh, Lapras is a basic 220 HP water type Pokemon, with its first attack being Power Splash, 40 times the number of energy attached to this Pokemon. Uh, for a water, pretty simple, and then a water, psychic, metal, weird energy cost. Seems like they're doing that little amazing rare thing going on here. Laramar Rain. Look at the top 20 cards of your deck and attach any number of energy cards you find there to your Pokemon in any way you like. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So I feel like Lapras isn't going to be the main attacker of any strategy it's employed in, but you could use Lapras plus that Cessation Crystal or Crispin. Um, the Apex, sorry, I meant plus, plus Crispin or something. Go for a turn two Laramar Rain or even turn one Laramar Rain if you can pull all that off and just set up your board with whatever attackers you'd like to use. Now, I don't know what would necessarily pair super well with this because you need to play Water, Psychic, and Metal or a combination of two of these three if you choose to play the tool. But there's got to be some crazy strategy that's waiting for us. Let's jump into this video, check it out. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I love reacting to the Japanese YouTube channel and I'll be doing a lot of competitive content reactions as well as we move on. Let me make my camera a little bit smaller so you guys can see the full bench and let's jump into it. Uh, we have Lapras on the left and it looks like, oh, we're loading. Chansey on the right. Mew EX is the opener. We're going to put Lapras down, you know, nice and easy. Nest Ball going first, which gives us an, an extra attachment if we need it. We're going to see the Ultra Ball coming through, grabbing ourselves a Ho-Oh V. A uh, Ho-Oh V, I believe, does more damage based on the number of energy, different energy types that are attached to it. 100 plus 30, I think, is the exact number. We're going to see the Radiant Greninja hitting the board as well. We're going to see the Town Store uh, attaching for turn. We're going to use Squawkabilly. Uh, discarding some more cards, two Carmines, so a lot of Carmines in this deck, just planning on going fast, going first. There's the ace spec I was talking about. This is going to make Lapras a little bit quicker and put itself in a good position to actually attack turn two with Lara Moraine and set up our attackers. We're going to go ahead and see the ho ability, putting it back onto the board with four energy cards. I, I didn't realize how many it was, and it ends your turn, I believe. So now we have a fully loaded up attacker, a Lapras ready to go, and we're going to see the Cornerstone Ogre Pond hitting the board, a direct counter to this. But, uh, yeah, it looks like a Chansey Stall kind of deck, uh, interesting enough. Um, the Lapras does go through this uh, Cornerstone Ogre Pond, but if we could put a Hero's Cape on it and make it pretty big, uh, it gets pretty tanky. Then we have a Furry Graph EX, it looks like, probably in this deck, um, to basically just, you know, get the ball rolling. We're going to see some energies attached. And uh, the Chansey deck is off to a good start with the TM Evo. No, the TM Tool, sorry. We're going to see an Arvin coming through. So Arvin and Carmines, there's a Trumpet and the Skateboard. We're going to see another ho being put onto the board. The Trumpet is going to go ahead and accelerate an energy card to two of the bench Pokemon that are colorless. So we can go ahead and set it up. We're going to go ahead and see the Lapras move into the active. A Metal for turn, the Cessation Crystal, uh, or the A-Spec Crystal, and we're going to go ahead and use Laramar Rain, looking at the top 20 cards of our deck and attaching as many energy as we find there. Oh my god, Look, just look at the player picking up that stack of cards. Oh wow, well, look at this dearth of uh, energies. Let's go ahead and attach... Uh, <laughs> oh my god, three to the holo and four to the active. Okay, so we're going we're to try to beat through the cornerstone with pure force. Uh, Blissey hitting the board here. Uh, Furry Graph also hitting the board. Uh, basic EX Pokemon, I believe, cannot attack the Furry Graph, which means that Lapras can't hit into it. We're going to see the Lapras, uh, another Hero's Cape coming in. Um, we're looking at, I think we're talking about options potentially for what could be good, what could be bad. We have a 400 HP Blissey. We're going to go ahead and use Iono, uh, drawing six cards. The second Blissey hitting the board. We're going to move for a Monkey Dory. This is actually really good in this matchup now because we can start moving damage. Uh, the Trumpet, also a great card for the Blissey deck because we can just accelerate energy out of the board and then we can move it onto whatever attackers we'd like uh, for free. So Blissey plus Trumpet becomes kind of a free uh, get a jail free card effectively. We're going to go ahead and boss up the Cornerstone Ogre Pond, which we should have put the Hero Escape on, in my opinion, because now it's going to get sent to the Shadow Realm. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do 240 damage exactly, because we just, for some reason, chose not to put the Cape onto the Ogre Pond that was very clearly telegraphed to be one-shot here in a situation. Um, we're going to get another Blissey onto the board, another Arvin here. Uh, there's no way to one-shot this uh, Ho-Oh here, it looks like, for 220. Um, but if we can, if we had some sort of an attacker, it would be really good here. Putting the Cornerstone back in, attached to Blissey. There's a Rigid Band. And we're going to do 160, knocking out the active and drawing some more cards. There goes the A-Spec, and here comes the Mew into the active. And we have a big ho getting ready to just an another uh, Trumpet and an E-Switch. Um, 
Loading up a second hoe, I don't think it'll be nearly as impactful, but we're basically doing a one-trick pony here with our hoe deck. Um, this one hoe is pretty much going to have to carry us, and if this somehow goes down, we're going to have to boss and make something happen. Another attachment, five energy to another hoe -ho. Research, we're just looking effectively for a vacuum here or bosses. Uh, I mean, vacuum is probably the perfect card here. If we play it, there is the vacuum situational here for, with a third Carmine as well. There goes the Hero's Cape. There comes the ho -ho. We're going to be doing 10. We're doing... How much is that? 8? Eight? 8 plus... With 340 damage, uh, it seems like. 340 damage, knocking out Blissey. This knocks out pretty much every single Pokemon in the standard format currently. And now we have to deal with this humongous threat. The Monkey Dory actually can help us deal with this. Because if we had damage on our board, which we currently do not, we could move some damage on with the Monkey Dory. But we're going to go ahead and just retreat the Monkey Dory um, more than likely into this Cornerstone, I feel like. Because the Cornerstone can't get one shot. And have our opponent on boss, but we're going to go ahead and 60 Confuse. Uh, now we have a boss plus coin flip play to win the game if we want to try for it, which I think it's absolutely worth to try for it here. Uh, escape board here. E-switch. We're going to move the fighting. Um, we're going to go ahead and Mew for two cards, looking for the boss's orders. Greninja drawing two more cards. Forest Sealstone to Ho-Oh V. I forgot because ho -Oh is a V Pokemon. We have access to Forest Sealstone, which now gets us any one card in our deck. I think there's one, two, three, four, five... Uh, attached. We're going to go ahead and not even flip for the attack here. We're just going to let this go through. Another attachment here. A switch coming through. Um, powering back up this big beefy attacker uh, and taking out the ho here for the turn. Uh, now we are in a position where we still have the seal stone active. We have pretty much access to our entire deck. There's the V-Star. There's the boss's orders almost certainly. Um, or the trumpet, whichever we need. There's the boss's orders bringing up the benched Ferrigraph with 260. We're swinging for uh, there it is. There's a sixth energy, 280, knocking out the Furigraph, taking the last two prize cards. This is like a very funny deck because I feel like it's not actually that good, but getting that Ho-Oh with the Laramar Rain seems like a great combination. Let's take a look at this list. Seems like a very turbo. Turn one, get Ho-Oh into the discard, get Ho-Oh into play. Strategy to use the ability, and once the ability is in play, you can use the Laramar Rain turn two with uh, Lapras or use Lapras as an early game attacker while you're setting up the board. Only two trumpets is a little bit uh, interesting because I feel like there should be Maybe a little bit more. Um, the energy counts seem a little bit high for some of these things, but I feel like you can't prize one if you want to do your max damage. I think it is different different energy typings. Four Carmine makes sense to me because it is a turn one, go fast kind of deck. I like the switch card. I think two rods is interesting as well. Maybe we don't need two rods. I think you could probably play uh, the stretchers instead, the rescue stretchers, to go ahead and uh, attach energy of the specific type you're looking for onto the board or rod back specifically what you're looking for as in like, I need to put ho back in my deck, or I need to put Mew back in my deck, or in my hand, sorry, rather than putting them back into the deck, because I don't think there's any way to, like, accelerate things out of the deck. Um, so putting bad cards back in your deck doesn't really make sense to me. Two boss is very light as well. I feel like we could probably play one less research and play one more boss, uh, and just up that count, and just go back down to three water as well. I feel like you don't need four water in this deck. Maybe you go to, like, three water, three trumpet, um, which just makes our mid-game pretty accessible to power up a second ho because I think with one ho we can't really win the game all the time. So having two ho just makes it so much more streamlined to end the game. So actually, I'm actually very interested in this deck. I think it's very cool. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed my little analysis of this, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.